folks. Okay, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but I've just been putting it off because I didn't know if people were gonna find it interesting or not. But then I remembered, I don't give a rat sass. <laughs> He's cooking my food, why would I give him sass, you know? The joke is rat sass. Okay, I feel like humans like to categorize each other in many ways. It's how their brain works. I say that like I'm not a human. I am, it's how our brain works. You see one of those videos of like a thing that fits into another thing perfectly, it itches our brain. We tend to do that with each other as well, right? We like putting people where we think they should go. That's why horoscopes exist. Why spend the time to get to know someone and find out all the little details that make them unique when you could just boil them down to the month that they were born in? Which is kind of weird. I'll say it. Oh, you're a Libra? So that means your parents probably had unprotected sex in January? It's yeah. hot as fuck. But obviously humans are way too complex to be simplified into a zodiac sign. So we have to be a little broader, right? <laughs> we have to be way broader with the categorization, which is why we have generation. You got the baby boomers, born between 1946 and 1964. Those are like our grandparents who uh, simply took a step outside and immediately got a job as the CEO of like a duct tape company. And they used their hard earned money to buy a house for $10 and now they sit around and use the remaining XP points to max out their casual racism skill tree. And then you got Generation X. I think Exhibit belongs to this generation, which is pretty cool. They're born between 1965 and 1980. And I can describe Generation X with four letters. HGTV. I think you get it. And then we've got the Millennials, born between 1981 and 1996. I was born in 94, so that would make me a Millennial. <laughs> Yeah, good try. I was hungry. Honestly, dude, millennials have been getting absolutely 360 behind the back slam dunked on the last year, seemingly out of the blue. So in this video, I wanted to go over why that is happening, like why millennials are getting made fun of so hard and see what I can do to stop it. And obviously we know the generation after millennials is Gen Z, but did you know, I just found this out, but the generation after Gen Z, is called Generation Alpha? Are you fuck? that is so unfair. The baby's just come out fucking lifting weights and being mean to women. As soon as the baby's born, he's just like, geez, mom, some <laughs> vagina you've got. But yeah, really quick, I gotta shout out my boy, Eddie, real quick. He did a really good video a while ago about millennials versus Gen Z when there was that big beef on TikTok for like no reason. But that feud was just the beginning. That was the kindling to this bonfire of hatred that is towards millennials. And honestly, dude, I, we, we probably deserve it. Millennials were born in like a really interesting time. I think the main thing that shaped millennials into how we behave and how we interact with each other was the internet or just the growth of the internet and technology in general. Technological growth has been exponential and we grew up right when it was starting to like really ramp up. Like I remember being a kid and using a dial-up connection on the family computer to go on addictinggames.com. I remember my dad had a pager and I, to this day, I still don't know what it was for. And I had to watch SpongeBob SquarePants in black and white on my video oh. now, okay? Oh. And then fast forward to when I was a teenager, I got my own laptop. I saw the introduction of smartphones and tablets. And then fast forward to my 20s, we got self-driving cars, the metaverse, vibrating underpants you control with an app, you name it. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 you thought, it, God, it was my, it was my phone. <laughs> you thought it was the under, I'm not, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was my phone. The app is telling me my underpants are low on battery. So I feel like millennials are the way that they are because so much was happening all at once and everything was changing so quickly. We kind of like, it was like we were falling out of a tall tree and we were just trying to like hold on to any branch, anything, so we just didn't fucking die. And we didn't. <laughs> Well, some of us did, but a lot of us survived. But at what cost? So for this video, I thought we'd break it up into three parts that really illustrate the, the mind of a millennial. First, we'll take a look at millennial style, and then we'll talk about millennial hobbies. And finally, we will talk about millennial humor. And by the time this video is done, maybe you'll like millennials, or most likely you're gonna, you're gonna hate them even more than you did before. So sorry, everybody. All right, style. Now, I'm no fashionista, okay? I think I... I think I dress pretty normally on Easter. But I like to think I know how to dress myself, right? I think I can put together an outfit. And I think I know when stuff looks cool. Ah! 
<laughs> but compared to these Gen Z kids, I, I dress like a substitute teacher, bro. These little brats could put on a ghillie suit, big chunky Osiris shoes and a top hat and still look cooler than me somehow. It's bullshit. That's just because younger people are cooler than me and that's I don't give a fuck, that's fine. But it is just so interesting to see how people my age dress sometimes. I can't really speak on women's fashion that much because what the fuck do I know about that? But I can dunk on dude fashion all day. Obviously everybody's different, everybody's style is different, but I feel like a lot of it has to do with your friends, your occupation, just the environment you're in on a daily basis. Because like millennial dudes who work in banking or investing, they dress like the biggest dorks. The thing about their fashion is like five days a week, they're just wearing a fucking suit. So when they're going out on the weekends, they're like, who do I wear? <laughs> so they just end up wearing the the longest t-shirt you've ever seen. You know those? You know what I'm talking about? You run into one of these guys in the bar and you're like, yo, who let the literal fucking ski hill into this bar? That's a, that's a legit ski hill standing in front of me with jeans on, long and white. <laughs> and dude, and then they got the, the jeans with like the lines on the knee and then they tie it together with the, the black Yeezys because 2016 was fucking so sick. Oh, this might yeah. just be a Toronto thing, but like 80% of millennial dudes dress like the bad guys in a breakdancing movie. Like I feel like as a millennial dude, you either dress like that or you were a hipster in high school. There are two wolves inside of you. One is a hipster and the other is a ski hill. I don't think that term is used very much anymore, but the resurgence of the word hipster in like the early 2010s was life-changing for me and like a lot of other millennials. Because the ironic t-shirts, the mustaches. <sighs> Fuck, hipster, I hardly know her. But seriously though, what the fuck was up with that? Why was everybody obsessed with huge mustaches back then? Like that was, that was the thing. <laughs> it was fucking mustaches and bacon on literally everything. Um, this epic mustache is unicorn bacon style. Like a boss. This is why we get made fun of guys. This is why we suck so hard, okay? What the fuck were we doing? Dude, hipsters, you know? <laughs> and I fucking fell for it, dude. I remember in class, I used to listen to like strictly Fleet Foxes and Vampire Weekend on my iPod Touch and I would keep the screen open, uh, facing up on my desk so people would walk by and be like, yo, this guy listens to fucking cool ass music. But uh, after the lumberjack barista trend died out, I feel like it was sort of replaced by the 2013 Tumblr era. You get black and white clothing, leather jackets, big fucking boots, and even bigger hats. And I'm guilty too, I used to wear humongous hats. I used to have, I used to wear the biggest hats on earth. <laughs> This was interesting too, because I feel like you can still see remnants of this time in like today's fashion. Like this iconic photo, I'm sure you've all seen this. Look at this guy. I feel like I fucking saw that guy like last week. Okay, actually, I think I, I might be able to speak on women's fashion for a second. It was either this or the fall girl aesthetic. In inside you, there are two wolves, <laughs> okay? Oh wow, yeah, this style is bringing me back, dude. Okay, let me leave a comment. Let me know if you want a video like the I live like a billionaire for a week, but it's gonna be I live like a early 2010s <laughs> millennial for a week. I don't even know what that would be. But all in all, millennial style was a little cringy looking back. And I know most people would be like, well, every generation looks back at the things they wore when they were younger and make fun of it, right? Times change, trends change, right? But no, okay? That is not true for millennials. We are the outliers because we made these. Hashtag mermaiding. What? what? Seriously, dude, if I saw somebody wearing this shirt, and I look below their waist and I see two regular old human legs instead of a bottom of a fish, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking the fuck out. But also if I look up and there's like, there are a reverse mermaid, like a fish head coming out of the top, I'd also freak the fuck out, but for a, a different reason. Dude, and we got another shitty millennial t-shirt. Fridays, we'd be like, squad goals. What does your shirt mean? Okay, on Fridays, we are definitely squad goals. <laughs> Don't catch us on a Thursday though, <laughs> between you and me. We are insufferable on Thursdays. On Thursdays, we go to the beach and we steal people's food. On Thursdays, we be like seagulls to wrap it up. I think millennial fashion was very tongue in cheek, you know, very self-aware, but it, it, it gets old pretty quick. You know, you can only be so self-aware until it's like a little annoying. Instead of like tongue in cheek, it should have been shirt in fire. Burn it. Now let's move on. Hobbies. I think going forward, I wanna clarify something. When I'm making fun of millennials, I'm basically making fun of white millennials. We are the worst part of everything 
throughout all of history because we don't bring anything new to the table. You know what I mean? We just eat the scraps, the things that were already there, but then we turn around and tell everybody that we made them. And even if we do bring something new to the table, it's not good. People of color share their delicious food, creative music, their beautiful fashion and films and literature. And then white people are just like, hey, have you met my girlfriend? Yeah, she's on the other end of this leash. Sort of walks around like a dog and I get a boner about it. And yes, I am kink shaming. If you're bringing that stuff out in public, we can make fun of you. I don't do that though. Hobbies. Hobbies. What do we like? What do millennials like? Honestly, pretty controversial take here, but I don't think millennials and their hobbies are that different from Gen Z and their hobbies. How do you do, fellow kids? Me personally, I did a lot of the same stuff that Gen Z teenagers do, I think. I played video games, I went skateboarding, hung out with my friends, I posted on social media. You know, I would drink alcohol and smoke weed. Millennials have the same hobbies as as Gen Z, but we just do them wrong, I think. And this TikTok right here illustrates that perfectly. And I'm proud to be a millennial with my side part and skinny jeans. And I won't be told what to wear or how to use emojis would you kindly shut the fuck up ain't nobody asked you for your opinion anyway here's a message from millennials to gen z stay in your motherfucking lane who knew who knew that you could take that freaking patriotic nationalist Propaganda. Propaganda. And make it even worse. Take that to the Ministry of Propaganda. Talk to the uh, Minister of Propaganda. I also don't know if that song is propaganda. I just wanted to use that video clip. Propaganda. Why would you make this? She really wrote this, recorded it, posted it, and thought it was a serve. On second thought, I think it was, okay? This is, this is camp. <laughs> she Carly Kloss that shit, dude. She was looking camp right in the eye. Stay in your motherfucking lane. We just do everything just a little wrong, like a little too much, you know? Like we can't just like Harry Potter and leave it at that. You gotta go to Harry Potter trivia nights and then you gotta put your Hogwarts house in your Instagram bio. And then you get bumper stickers that say baby muggle on board. And then you get the fucking Deathly Hallows tattooed on the back of your neck for some reason. And then you make shit like this. We defended the stone. We found the chamber. We rescued the prisoner. We were chosen by the goblet. We joined the order. We learn from the prince, and we mastered the hollows. We are the Harry Potter generation. You didn't do any of those things. Here's what you did. You guys are treating this shit like it's a religion. They're books. Imagine if somebody started a whole religion based off a book. That'd be insane. And dude, this graphic is just so ugly looking, like, which is a great segue to millennial interior design. That's a big hobby for millennials. You know, we're getting to the age where we're starting to become homeowners, which gives a lot of artistic freedom to people to decorate their home. My girlfriend is fucking amazing at interior design and she made our house look cool as hell. But there are a lot of millennials out there who just fill their homes with very questionable things. Chuggy thing, as you could say. If you never heard the term chuggy, it basically describes the things that the people who I went to high school with are really into. Like girl boss merch, minion memes, anything that features that keep calm design, Disney adult stuff. Classy Disney. There's a lot of overlap with chuggy and millennial style, but the one thing at the pinnacle where these two things meet is a brand called Ray Dunn. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's like it's pottery, like like mugs and like pots and shit, where it just has the the thinnest font. So thin, you, you gotta squint to read it. It'll, it'll be a jar and it just has coffee on it. Like that's where you just put your coffee. Which is honestly a little restricting. That's kind of annoying, right? If I want, if I buy a jar, I want to put whatever I want in there. Don't limit me to just, to just coffee, right? Also, it's probably like blasphemy to put anything in the coffee jar other than coffee, right? You put like flour in there and a little demon pops out like, Ah, oh, so, so you've, you've chosen, chosen death. death. Consider, Consider your time, time on Earth, Earth. Ray Dunn. But yo, millennials go fucking crazy for this shit. They go on all fours, they're barking like a dog, and their fucking boyfriend's got a leash on their neck. <laughs> I got, dude, there's one video I gotta find. My first part-time job was at Marshall's, and Marshall's is owned by the TJX Corporation that owns Marshall's, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, a bunch of those stores. And all of them carry this Ray Dunn brand stuff that was shown in the video. So the first time I ever did an opening shift for Marshall's, I was told by my manager to watch out for the Ray Dunn women. 
And I was like, what's a Ray Dunn woman? They basically told me that it was this group of women who would go to the home goods across the freeway from our marshals and then to our marshals every single morning and buy out all of the Ray Dunn stuff that we had. Fucking millennials, man. You put the word Potter in anything, they'll, fuck, they'll go feral for it. <laughs> it's Wednesday at a home goods store where a group of women waits for a shipment of Ray Dunn pottery. And dude, Ray Dunn isn't the only culprit in this weird trend to just put fucking whatever words you want on anything. Let's take a look at some here. Yeah, Jesus Christ, man, I can't even read these. Sometimes I open my mouth and my mother comes out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what do you mean? Hey, you're my son, I love you. What does that mean? Whenever she opens her mouth, her mother like comes out, like of the closet? I fuck with it. Sometimes I open my mouth and my, uh, my mom tells me she's gay. Aww. I was born to be wild, but only until 9 p.m. or so. <laughs> You've had too much wine? Me neither. Me neither. That's also another thing with being a millennial. There's, I think we're like all functioning alcoholics and it's like promoted with that stuff too. It's like, yo, you have, here's a wine, a wine glass the size of a wine bottle. You're gonna drink the whole thing right now in front of me. Do it. Like I said before, the hobbies of the millennial, they're just like, just like anyone else, okay? We just do them incorrectly. So stay, stay in your motherfucking lane. Okay, and finally, humor. humor. I could talk about this for hours. First, let me ask you a question. When you think of millennial humor, what do you think of? The Office, Friends, Big Bang Theory even. And that's fair, but people of all ages watch those shows. The millennial humor that I think of is like Tumblr adult, awkward turtle, sense of humor, you know what I mean? Here's some examples. You know when you're, uh, you're, you're doing a bit with your friend, you're joking around, and then some other person enters that conversation right when it's getting like really, really strange. And then that other person is like, um, what did I just walk into? Or when something weird happens to like a group of people and then one person is like, so that just happened. Like God, it pisses me off so much what are some other examples okay like early early internet shit like when somebody saw a piece of content that they really liked it's like on tumblr or reddit or something they'd respond and they'd type, they'd type out you sir have just won the internet but i get it back then internet memes and humor it was so simple scumbag steve we get it bad luck brian easy set up in the top text punchline on the bottom text. And that was easy for people to understand. I think nowadays you have to be so like dialed in to internet and meme culture to even begin to understand like modern memes, I guess. For example, here's a TikTok that showed up on my For You page just the other day. Yeah, dude, you show that to me at like age 15? Fucking probably would have laughed still, but you know the point I'm trying to make. Like that video is like referencing other memes, other formats, and other sounds too, and like reworking them into one, and it's also like self-referencing too. It's a fucking mess, dude, but it made me laugh really hard. So I totally understand why a lot of millennials still cling on to that old style of internet humor. Because other millennials my age went to university to get their degrees while I stayed at home and practiced my bunny rabbit shadow puppet. Obviously they didn't have time to stay current with the memes and like TikTok trends. They were busy being adults, I guess. But it's my job to like watch videos and talk about them all day. So it's like, that's why I like to think I'm a, a cool millennial. But still, even though I understand why millennials act like this and post things like this. It's still very funny to me. Dude, like when I see a selfie of a 30 year old dude who's like super excited about something and it's one of these. Or my personal favorite, when like a 30 year old dude uh, gets a haircut and it's one of these. Dude, it's fucking so funny, it's bullshit. I don't know, I could go on about this all day, but I think every generation goes through this. We're not the cool young ones anymore, and that's fine. Okay, we gotta let go. It's okay. <laughs> but at the same time, when I'm in my 40s, and I'm, and I'm seeing Gen Z go through what we are going through right now, I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna be me. All right, honestly though, no matter what generation you belong to, you gotta eat. Which brings us to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Folks, I've been eating HelloFresh every week for like more than two years now, and here's why. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, 
and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. I know cooking takes a lot of time and effort and getting a delicious, healthy meal on the table is an accomplishment in itself that is worth celebrating. And why don't you let HelloFresh help you out with 50 weekly menu and market items to choose from so you can spend less time worrying about dinner and more time focusing on the bigger things in life. And with HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients, that means less time spent meal prepping and less time spent at the grocery store. And on top of all that, the food is friggin' delicious. HelloFresh has more five-star reviews than any other meal kit, so you know you'll be getting something scrumptious. They have tons of different options every week to fit your diet, and with HelloFresh, produce gets from the farm to your doorstep in under a week to ensure peak freshness. And like I've said tons of times before, One of the best parts of HelloFresh is their flexibility. You can pick how many meals you want, increase the number of servings, add extra lunches and desserts, and if you need to change your delivery day or skip a week entirely, can all be done easily right in the HelloFresh app. And not to mention, you're helping the environment as well when you eat HelloFresh. Because compared to grocery shopping, HelloFresh cuts down on your food waste by at least 25%. So you're helping Mother Nature while you get to eat delicious food? Uh, so that just happened. And guess what? HelloFresh is hooking up the citizens of Curtis Town with an incredible deal. And all you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use code CurtisTown16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Yeah, you heard me. 16. Like I said before, we've been eating HelloFresh every week for more than two years now, and we absolutely love it, and we look forward to it every week. So give it a try. I promise you, you won't regret it. Okay, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past. Back to me. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button because one like equals one epic pizza. <laughs> Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, I know this is a little different from my usual style, but you know, sometimes I got a thing I want to talk about and then I talk about it. But yeah, you can press the subscribe button because I make a video all the time. And as soon as you do, you become a valued citizen of Curtis Town. If you didn't know, Curtis Town is the best place to live in the world. And I'm the mayor, so you have to be nice to me. It is the law. You can check the description for the things I do. Instagram, Twitter, podcast, all that bullshit. All right, that's it. I would stick around, but I got to go. New Ray Dunn just dropped. Peace. Folks.